You know, hello everybody. My name is Walter. I'm a senior colorist at Company 3 Hollywood. I work in the movie industry. Lots of people ask me to explain what that means. Or they try to guess with outcome like, you know, you do color for the actor and the actresses. And this, that makes me giggle all the time because it's not what I do. Uh, I do color for the actual movie that you see. I work in collaboration with director of photography, director, designers. We create the look and style of the movie. I also help to solve problem in the photography that might arise at the time of shooting. Think about, you know, clouds. You cannot tell the clouds go back at the beginning because we have to do another take. So, you know, weather doesn't obey the law of the movie. Think about the movie, The Matrix. There are two words in that movie where the character play the story. Inside The Matrix, where all is greenish tint and outside The Matrix, where the world is more normal with steel blue undertone. Today in a similar movie, my job is to collaborate with those, to create those two virtual worlds where the story will take part. You can see a similar approach in a movie recently released for streaming called Bliss, where the protagonists float between two different worlds, each one with his visual cue and characteristics. We don't have to continue to remind you where you are in the story. The cue and the style will do it for you. Think about big chase sequence, you know, like a 007 movie. Um, often shot throughout different days, throughout different time of the day. You may be lucky, have the same weather, or may you may have light different from take to take, often presenting a mix of visual effects, live action. Once the edit is done, my job is to smooth out those difference in the photography so you, the audience, will be lead to believe it was a uniform and contiguous scene shot all in the same day and time so you can focus on the story, not on the weather. But what is possible now is started a long time ago. And it's a story of two journey, my personal one and, my te and the technology they made all of these possible. Today, if you look at the foreign film, even if you don't know the language, there are three clues that hit your subconscious, the acting, the music, and the color. The most visual of all the cue, good actor can use the whole body to show an emotion. An entire scene can be presented with no words, and we can still follow the intent, look at any silent, um, silent era movies, and you will see that despite the lack of wording, how easy is to follow the story. Theater was a staple in the antiquity, for example. The music is the second clue. It, you can understand the whole movie just by, based on the me melodic line, the rhythm, the harmony, the texture, the depth, the soundtrack. They can speak of haste, of romance. They can speak of tension and sadness, hope or despair. Although music was present in the early movies, really it's just after the 30s that start to be um, easier to have the talking and all the speak for all the, the actors. The third clue of a scene reside in its color. While the actual film at the beginning of the last centuries was black and white, the actual you know, piece of film, since then, there was a technological strive to add color to the image because colors speak directly to our emotion and our subconscious mind. Color in the movie is not anything new. We tried to color photograph back in 1800 and we were doing this one by hand like a painting. Then we learned to think the black and white with a dominant, sepia versus blue, red versus green, using different chemicals. At the beginning of the 20th centuries, Painting was used, but it was impractical for long feature film. Therefore, either photochemically tinting or stain based, not neutral, were commonly used in the 20s. It was a long way. A practical way to record a proper full spectrum color was only invented in the early 30s with the three strip camera by Technicolor. Think about the color in Wizard of Oz or Gone with the Wind. Imagine how it was then to have witnessed for the first time in a theater, a full color movie should have been amazing. When I grew up, 
I only had a black and white TV at home. So for me, Gone with the Wind, it's black and white. And the first time I saw a full color play of it, I was in awe. Kodak simplified the process with a single strip. It has all the three record color in one unique celluloid. That was about, you know, mid fifties. This mean camera got lighter and they could be used in many more artistic way that was not possible before. Celluloid was the easiest to produce, easier to sell, user for the general public, it was easier for filmmakers, it was less costly. And ultimately, you know, color movie literally exploded as an industry. With black and white first and color following suit, technology allowed to change and help the smooth of the photography during the exposure of the final print. But then color stock meant you are not bound anymore to a difficult tinting process to add a color feel to an image. You could artistically change the photography to introduce a creative element that it altered the perception of the scene by simply adjusting the light you use in the lab to create the print. To return to the same example, the Matrix implemented that. After the scene were shot during the printing phase, a strong yellow-green light was added to exposure of the print, giving the characteristic matrix look that we remember from the movie. Every movie used photochemical coloring to enhance the story. There is a human direct link on what we see and the emotion we feel. Some of the color are ancestral for us. For example, red is a color that command attention. All the stop signal all over the world are red. Red can call of danger, portray the consumption of the bright fruit, often is used to express sexuality in an encounter. Yellow, yellow can be the color of the sunshine. If you think about red, a red healthy skin tone, it's healthy. Too much yellow and the skin are sick. A darker color can represent danger and dungeon and horror. There is a language that developed with all the visual art and we're all part of it, from painting to photography to the movie itself. When you see a dark scene with a lot of blue in it, you may think of moonlight. When you see a golden light scene, you may think of a happy romantic moment. Dark, dark green and cyan speak of horror and danger. Purple can speak of reality, but more often than not, it speak of death. And then the 90 scene, and that man's computer. Renoir once says, without painting a tube, there could not have been impressionism. Computer is the modern paint in a tube. It is 1971. Patton is the winner of the Oscar of the year. The man is still going to the moon and will probably go back soon. The war in Vietnam is still raging and in a little farm in Turin, near Turin, I was born. That part is not in the history book yet. As I mentioned, I grew up with a small black and white TV. So every big movie I saw was in black and white. Rocky, black and white. Godfather, yeah, black and white. Star Wars, A New Hope, the first one, that's black and white for me. Then I became a teenager in the eighties and I was allowed to go to the movie theater. Those are the year of the first Terminator, E.T., Back to the Future, Alien. I saw not only what a real movie with all its color glory was, but how visual effect made this movie possible. And a single name got stuck on my head, Carlo Rambaldi. If you don't know, Rambaldi was an Italian who won the Oscar for practical VFX in, uh, in movies. Suddenly I saw how robotic technology and design can be mixed together to create entertaining movie magic. He became a hero. So I started to make a plan like every teenager does. I received a degree in electronic from a high school. They attended at night. I was working at the time. I was learning photography on my spare time. I was planning to study robotic at the Polytechnic University of Turin, but life has more imagination than one of a teenager. After my degree, I got hired immediately by the National Italian Broadcaster. Those are the 90s, where computers start to revolutionize everything we do. In the theater, you were watching Titanic, Jurassic Park, another Terminator, Save Private Ryan, Toy Story, and my favorite, The Matrix. Computer graphics start to revolutionize how so we do TV. And I spend countless hours, mostly at night, 
on very expensive equipment to learn how to do VFX, compositing of scene, how to do 3D object modeling. But my real passion was the lighting and texturing of a scene, how to make the scene photorealistic and give it the, light, the right look and feel. At the beginning of 2000, I moved to Rome to pursue a career in VFX. And yet again, light was toying with me and presented with a completely different opportunity. While in the 90s, computer could hold a few seconds of a movie in the disc and a VFX artist could color correct just that. The Cohen brother with O oh Brother Where Are Two tried what nothing was tried before. Instead of just a little bit of a movie, why we don't try to color digitally the whole movie, a whole feature length one? The ability to change the photography in a way that was not possible before, up to that point, the freedom of creating a look that was inimaginable before suddenly become a reality. Meanwhile, meanwhile in Rome, my VFX career went straight for the exit sign, uh, but alas, I was hired by um, another British company, Quantel. Exactly the time this new machine, this new big computer that could host a color a whole movie were being built, available for the general public. That is, if you have about a million dollars. Cinecita in Rome got a couple and nobody knew how to use it. They were too new. Uh, so for me, a decade and a half studying, preparing for the, junch, the right juncture of technology, artistry and photography finally got to fruition. I spent in Cinecita long nights well, either to be successful, you have to spend long night or start something on a garage. And learning how to use this new machine, to learn how human vision works, how to scan and record material from real film, then back to film. And finally, how to modify color to give emotion to a scene. After a couple of years, got invited in Hollywood, photo camp. I was going there to train color timers from the lab to use those new machines, you know, being a trainer. It was the end of 2003. And everything immediately switched, life yet again, and end up learning how to properly color, how to look at the photography, how to make a good image, how to talk and interpret a cinematographic language. And eventually I trained to become a full digital colorist. Then Mascarella was my mentor just to remember him briefly, then colored the theatrical version of Titanic, Jurassic Park, True Lie, Monster Inc., Interstellar, A Full Eight, and with me, lastly, Dunkirk. Many, many movies. I love Dan. With Dan, we were going from seeing real film projected, how the lab work came with the chemistry, back how to reproduce all of that in the digital form with the digital projector. It was lots of learning and lots of fun. Then I start to be a colorist at that point, to take the responsibility for the final, final touch of a movie, to bring the photography to life for the audience. No matter which project I worked on, I did my best to serve the vision of all the people that were involved. I work in you know, indie movie like Hustle and Flow, one of my favorite indie movie, an international blockbuster like Star Wars, The Last Jedi. And I'm spending, again, time at night to study human vision and photography and find the fine line that thread and link together art and technology. I'm the son of a world where the computer really did not exist and I will be old when everybody will have access to one. My role in the process of storytelling creation is perhaps small, but I see great potential in everyone that is in school now. There are possibilities that simply did not exist back then. You have the chance to pursue art in the form of movie making in a much simpler way as a cinematograph cinematographer, a VFX artist. Well, if you like chase stuff and blow up stuff on a set. As a writer, as a fashion designer, a sound designer, as a colorist, a set engineer, you can build a set and fantastic idea and bring story to life in a way that was not imaginable a decade ago. Look at how a movie that talk about the future introduce us to the technology idea that one day can be our reality. Think of 2001 A Space Odyssey, 
That was 1968. And you can see the concept of iPads and tablets that we use today all over the world. And the concept of artificial intelligence, computer that can talk and interact with us. Any of the gadget in Mission Impossible, James Bond franchise, some of which the real product that we can end up to enjoy today. Custom designer, the fashion, the everyday fashion was influenced by movie. There is power in imagining a story and presenting it on a movie screen. And the same can be said, you know, for the set to bring us from the Roman and Egyptian empire of the past to the far stretch of another empire in a galaxy far, far away. I would say to you, don't lose hope, never lose the ambition. And thank you for letting me inspire you and your future has been a pleasure.